Same thing on Brian Danielson. Well, we can talk about his decision making. Um, you want to talk about his decision making? I mean, we talked about it in a lot of detail on Sunday, but is there anything I mean, we didn't discuss? Um, probably a lot. I kept thinking that we rushed through it because we had so much to get to on Sunday. But um, yeah, I mean, like he, you know, what he talked about that night we talked about, which was that, you know, he, he liked WWE, he liked the people in WWE, he liked Vince McMahon, but he still had to leave or still wanted to leave or whatever it was. He had a real, he had a really tough decision to make. You know, it's kind of all popped into my head all of a sudden this morning when I woke up, but uh, about things I know that I forgot. But um, so, I mean, the, the gist of everything was is that when you go, if you go back to uh, what was it, twenty eighteen, when he was, you know, his contract was expiring, and he, you know, he had, I, I don't know what he knew at that time about AEW I'm I don't know I know that um he was talking about I, th I think he knew I think he knew but I, I can't swear to this but I do know that you know he was talking about Ring of Honor and he was talking about New Japan Pro Wrestling and and you know other places and all that and said that you know he had talked with them and he could make deals and he could make good money um, away from WWE and he was considering it um, and he did say that there was something at that time that was the that he had to sign an NDA about so that could be this it could be something else because there was a bunch of stuff that was running around back in 2018 that that never came out and some stuff that did and AEW being obviously one of those things so um, and considering you know who he you know was you know he he sometimes traveled and you know i think he was pretty good friends with with cody uh rhodes and you know cody rhodes was very into this thing from the start and was uh one of cody rhodes's favorite wrestlers and uh who he thought was one of the best guys so i'm i don't know that he knew my gut would tell me that he knew but um when he made the decision to sign with WWE, I mean, it he absolutely, it was a hard decision to make. He was offered a great deal by WWE. A lot of people were mad that he, you know, I mean, on fans, whatever. It's like, you, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's reasons. Um, I mean, there's, a, he had a lot of reasons, but it, it was also, um, he was also not like a hundred percent in the sense of, he very much was thinking, did I do the right thing? And then he went there and was there for a couple of years. And, you know, obviously he let this deal expire. And even when he let the deal expire, um, you know, he was, he, he, you know, New Japan was a big thing. And, you know, the, the key aspect of this, as we've talked about, was whether Nick Khan could pull off the um, exclusive deal between New Japan and WWE, which obviously did not happen. Because if that happened, uh, maybe he would have gone in the other direction. And maybe he wouldn't have. Um, but New Japan was was a, very big, was a very big part of it, which is funny because now New Japan's not part of it at all because of the pandemic. And Mexico, which was a, a, not a big part, but it was something he, he's always wanted to do, uh, is working in Mexico. That's not part of it right now either because of the pandemic he's not going to mexico right now um he's not going to japan anytime soon nobody is i mean gals anderson haven't even been back to japan and in, in how long and that that was the place that they were going to be based you know tna was supposed to or impact was just supposed to be something they would do between um new japan tours so you know it's just one of those situations i mean you know i mean uh it's so when it came down to that um, I think that there was, you know, a lot of matches and a lot of things. I know that one of the things that he was, so, so he was interested in getting New Japan and, and, and WWE open in the sense that WWE had, had, had offered him, as he mentioned, they had made a great offer to him. 
So both offers were money wise um, similar. Um, and both would have allowed him to do New Japan. WWE was going to allow him to do New Japan. Um, and he was trying to open the door for other people in WWE that wanted to go to New Japan to be able to do that. Um, but that seems to be a dead issue right now from WWE standpoint. I have heard anything about WWE guys going to New Japan. There was a lot of other things. Um, one of the things that, that he was talking about making his decision about was what would be the best thing for the industry as a whole as opposed to the best thing for him what would be the best role for the industry as a whole and perhaps probably in looking at the big picture uh, he may have felt like Mick Foley did many many years ago when he went to TNA that the best thing for the industry is comp competition at a high level and you know Mick Foley went to, to TNA years ago for that reason um, for the industry as a whole if that you know if competition is one of the key things then going to TNA I mean going to um, AW would obviously be a big part of that as well so um, that was a factor the finances you know like I said the money situation was similar the ability to go to New Japan in theory it was similar in the end um but you know it's a it's a new challenge it's a new place you know um so i think that that had something to do with it and at the end of the day you know i mean i i i'm sure that he probably got along really good with tony khan but he's a big vince mcmahon fan and, um, you know, more than people really understand. He's a big, big fan of Vince McMahon as a person, um, you know. And uh, so it was it was not an easy decision. Obviously, his, uh, you know, his, his wife and his sister-in-law are probably going to be back in WWE. They've said that. Um, they're not going to AEW as far as I know. Um, his father and I guess, I guess you would call it father-in-law, his his. His his wife's stepfather. I don't know what the thing is, but it's John Lauren John Laurinaitis is married to Nikki and Brianna's uh, mother, so he's basically family. And you know, it was John's job to make sure that Brian signed and did not go. So that's a tricky thing there. But in the end, at the end of the day, he made the decision to go. And, um, you know, you know, again, it's a lot of new things. And, you know, like I said at the time, if he doesn't like it, he can go back in three years and chalk it up. But if he if he doesn't do it, um, you know, you'll never know because he turned it down, you know, or, or made the decision not to do it at the very beginning. He could have, you know, he could have been there from, you know, I mean, he could have been there from the start if uh if things went the way they did uh but you know it's probably in in a lot of ways it's probably better to be coming now for a lot of reasons i mean uh now you're fresh um it's really it's it's an interesting thing you know there's a lot of new people going there so so uh that's the situation anything else i mean, I mean you'd know better than i yeah i'm trying to remember everything um but yeah, I mean that's I mean that's the basic gist of of what he was wrestling with was um you know, it was it, like I said like with with Adam Cole it seemed like Adam Cole was pretty much, you know, he just looked at the situation and believe me, I've learned a lot about Adam Cole, you know, not about Adam Cole personally, but about WWE WWE and Adam Cole and the main roster plans and um all I could say is is that uh I can say with no reservations that Adam Cole made the right move. Uh, with Danielson, time will tell. I mean, I can't say with no reservations. I think he made the right move. Um, I mean, for the good of the business, I would say he probably made the right move for himself and his happiness. I mean, either way, he was going to work limited schedule. He'll probably work less dates in AEW than he would have in WWE um, because they, you know, they don't they don't have talent work on every like like he may wrestle in AEW over the course of a year, maybe like thirty matches, and in WWE it would probably be like twice as many. Um, 
so that's better in theory i think long term for his body and um and one of the keys again is is that you know he's got young children he just he wants to be home a lot so um you know he understands the business and everything so um but but wwe was going to give him a limited schedule as well for that very reason wwe didn't want to lose him so they were going to make concessions to keep him but um obviously you know he, he did his jobs on the way out i think that uh I don't want to say he knew, but um, I mean, I think I think he really wanted, you know, like like again, if 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 there was not a pandemic, I think that he'd have been been in New Japan a while ago, and I think the idea was he wanted to take the summer off, and this was the time to, you know, you know, the, for for Tony Khan to debut him right before the New York show right on this big show that he really wanted to make a statement. Obviously, the Adam Cole thing came together at the last minute, but it was it was always, you know, the big thing was uh, Punk and Danielson debuting with, you know, right before football season starts and trying to, you know, build AEW. And, um, you know, we'll see how it, how it all works out in the long run. You know, there's, there's being hopeful and... That sort of thing, but when I heard this whole deal with New Japan and how WWE was going to try and make a deal with New Japan so that Daniel Bryan could go work there, it was like this is never going to happen. I mean, I've I've been watching WWE forever. I've been they've following deals with, Vince they, forever. They, they, they've made deals with Japan before, and Nick Khan's not Vince. He's but not, at the end, at the end of at the end of the day, he did not. You know, that's that's one of the big stories of the year. You know, is is that he did not make that deal because uh, he was working. I mean, that was the big thing. I mean, and the the you know, it if he had made the deal, would have cut AEW out of you know all of the stuff. We wouldn't have had this John Moxley Minoru Suzuki match, things like that. Um, so that was a big thing, and and they did not pull that one off. And Nick Khan's made a lot of big deals, and this one, which was a big one when it came to the. I don't want to say the the access of the business, but it was a big one. Um, I mean, historically, I mean, to me, like when you, if you look back, it was potentially a giant story that would have changed many f- aspects of pro wrestling as far as that deal. And New Japan did not go for that. WWE is it's interesting because they're so powerful and so large, but you know when it you know I mean. You know, yeah, all those UK promotions wanted to work with them, but when it came to like, and they've tried to, you know, make deals with with CMLL, and they've tried to make deals with AAA, and they've tried to make deals with New Japan, they tried to buy Stardom, they tried to buy Noah. I mean, it's like they've tried to make all these deals when it comes to foreign markets, and aside from the UK, for whatever reason, none of those deals have ever been have ever been. Well, I mean, when you think about it, I mean, yes, they they did some things with New Japan in in the in the nineties. But it's eighties, 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 not so much nineties. All right, so it's twenty twenty one now. Yeah. And you know you know how Vince operates. Like the deal would have to be fully in his favor. I'm sure he wouldn't want his guys working with anybody else from any other promotion. I'm sure he would have tried to have exclusivity, and I they just def, def, definitely wanted. They definitely now now to keep Danielson, they would have allowed him to go without the exclusivity. But they wanted, they did want to be the exclusive provider of foreign talent to New Japan. They did want that, which because the key the key being that it aces out. You know, I don't think that they care about acing out Impact, you know, or, or Ring of Honor, but absolutely AEW. I mean, that was that is absolutely part of the deal. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.